This video is part one of a two-part series that seeks to introduce what the academic study of film aesthetics entails. However, before broaching this topic, it's important to establish one, what the academic discipline of film studies involves more broadly, and two, what the study of aesthetics entails as a branch of philosophy. Fortunately, I've already covered the former in a video essay titled What is Film Studies, which I would recommend watching before continuing with this one. This video essay is available to view now on the Cinema Scholar YouTube channel, and for those interested, I provided a link to it in the description box below and at the end of this video. This brings us to the second point that must be established. What is aesthetics? You will often come across broad definitions of aesthetics, such as the philosophical inquiry into art and beauty, or something to that effect. However, as Andrew Clevin points out, the concept of the aesthetic is best considered as a cluster of interrelated meanings. Although the notion of contemplating art and beauty extends as far back as ancient Greece, the word aesthetics first began being used in the 18th century, when aesthetics emerged as a distinct and systematic strand of Western philosophy. Since then, the term aesthetic has become an elusive and multifaceted one. Indeed, James Shelley writes that the term aesthetic has come to be used to designate, among other things, a kind of object, a kind of judgement, a kind of attitude, a kind of experience, and a kind of value. He later elaborates, For the most part, aesthetic theories have divided over questions particular to one or another of these designations, whether artworks are necessarily aesthetic objects, how to square the allegedly perceptual basis of aesthetic judgments with the fact that we give reasons in support of them, how best to capture the elusive contrast between an aesthetic attitude and a practical one, whether to define aesthetic experience according to its phenomenological or representational content, and how best to understand the relation between aesthetic value and aesthetic experience. To complicate matters further, aesthetic inquiries are not limited to artworks, they can be directed towards any object that is perceptible in some way, whether that be furniture, a landscape, or a piece of music. Further to this, the aesthetic does not exclude subject matter that may otherwise be considered ugly, obscene, or unsavoury. One can, for instance, evaluate the aesthetics of a prison, a cemetery, or a morgue. Sometimes the philosophical subfield philosophy of art is encompassed within aesthetics. Necessarily, this broadens the scope of aesthetics even further to include topics such as ontology, definitions of art, spectatorship, and the characteristics of fiction. If we focus, however, on the 18th century's understanding of aesthetics, the term begins to take on more definition by implicating an expressly evaluative component. As Clevin elaborates, the interest in aesthetics that emerges in the 18th century is explicitly concerned with matters of value, and in particular the judgment of beauty. For Alexander Baumgarten, the field of aesthetics would provide a foundation for explaining and justifying human judgment about what is and what is not beautiful. As we shall see, the multifaceted nature of aesthetics can especially be observed in discussions on film, a medium with an ontology ever in flux and its artistic merits constantly weighed. Perhaps because the advent of film was born out of technological innovation rather than artistic ambition, Early discussions surrounding the new medium were preoccupied by the question of whether or not film should be considered an art form, and if so, what its constituent elements were. In this way, you will find that seminal writings on film are often infused with an awareness of this ontological ambiguity, even if explication of this topic is not the primary goal. This is in part why film aesthetics, as a subfield of film studies, is difficult to define. Matthew Noble Olson touches on this issue when he writes, the differentiation of an aesthetic of film from film theory or film philosophy is complicated, overlapping, and often contested. What might be understood as an aesthetic of film extends back almost to the origins of the medium, and much of what we identify as film theory could be understood as having some aesthetic concern, either as a consideration of film as an art, or as part of the realm of the sensible or the beautiful. Both of these approaches to film, the discussion of the medium's ontology, and an evaluation of the film's artistic merits or demerits would fall within the realms of film aesthetics. But one might then ask, how do these discussions intersect with the non-formal content of a film, for example its themes or subject matter, or the context of its production? 
To answer that question, one must first bear in mind that there are various approaches that can be taken in the academic study of film. The most common include historical, political, industrial, cultural, and philosophical. Within a philosophical outlook, there again exist various strands of focus, one of which is aesthetics. That being said, all of these approaches can and often do overlap. Clevin elaborates on this potential and how it implicates a chiefly aesthetic evaluation of film. Aesthetics does not discount or demean moral, political, emotional, cognitive, or conceptual content. This content is important and often essential to an aesthetic evaluation, but the engagement will be with the value of its expression through the form of the work. This contrasts with those occasions where, for example, ideological, contextual, or conceptual content, even if it relates to formal or presentational matters, is the primary concern and the basis of the evaluation. Equally, not all values relating to the visual, oral, and sensory, the features ostensibly underpinning aesthetic interest, are automatically of aesthetic value. Something may be visually, orally, and sensually valuable to some of us at some time for some reason. Pornography would be an extreme example, and be of little aesthetic value. Notably, Clevin also cautions, it is important not to fall prey to a popular misconception that aesthetics is equivalent to formalism, an adherence to form at the expense of content, for example subject matter. Nor is it equivalent to aestheticism, if this is taken to mean an exaggerated devotion to beautiful forms, once again at the expense of content. As we have seen then, film aesthetics is a nuanced subfield of film studies. Indeed, an aesthetic study of film can be approached in various ways and can implicate ideas beyond immediate aesthetic interests. This is reflected in the works of many thinkers that have contributed to contemplating this topic throughout the short history of cinema. For those wanting to research this area of film studies further, I've compiled a list of some of the key figures and texts in the field of film aesthetics, each accompanied with a brief overview which you can find in part 2 to this series.